Join us as we uncover true Bible history. From the creation of the heavens and the earth, to the first man and woman, from the forbidden tree of knowledge, to ancient biblical manuscripts and translations. Discover information about early settlers in the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, Egypt, ancient Israel, and Rome. All this and more in our new series, Uncovering True Biblical History. What is the name of God? The Most High Elohim. Many will say, Jehovah, Jehovah, Lord, God, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yah, I am, Ahaya Asher Ahaya, El Shaddai, Yahweh, or Adonai. So how can we even know which name is the true name of the God of the Bible? The Bible has many different translations and interpretations which have left many confused concerning his name. This verse in the scriptures denotes that Heavenly Father's real and true name would be a mystery. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4 What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Why is this scripture even in the Bible? We are about to explore scriptural proof of the name of the Heavenly Father and the name of His Son. In the ancient world there were many gods, gods that people deemed to be great, gods and goddesses that were said to have conquered empires and kingdoms. These were all false gods. According to the scripture we know that it was the God of the Israelites that delivered Babylon into the hands of the Medes and Persians. But you have to know that the Medes and Persians attributed their victory to their god named Ahura Mazda, meaning the great god. Like the god of the Israelites, it has been said that the gods of ancient times also controlled nations, the fate of people's lives, made judgments, cursed and blessed individuals and peoples. These gods all had names also and some of their names were similar to the name of the god of the Bible. The people in ancient times viewed the Most High God of the Bible as a single example within a larger class of divine beings. They did not see him any different. 2 Chronicles chapter 32 verse 19 says, And they spake against the God of Jerusalem, as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of the hands of man. Many books and non-biblical manuscripts list the name of the God of the Bible, YHWH, also known as Yahweh, alongside of other deity names. So it wasn't a matter of his name, but of who he was the God of. This is why the God of the Bible had to prove himself in the eyes of the people. If his name was known among people, then you can best believe he was listed among the other gods of the earth. He was known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Several places in the Old Testament he was called the God of Abraham. Genesis chapter 31 verse 53. Exodus chapter 3 verse 6. Chapter 3 verse 15. Chapter 4 verse 5 In other passages of the Bible, the Most High Elohim is referred to as the God of different patriarchs of the Old Testament. The God of Israel, Exodus chapter 34 verse 23. The God of Jeshurun, Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 26. The God of David is recorded three times. 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 5 2 Chronicles chapter 34 verse 3 Isaiah chapter 38 verse 5 The God of Hezekiah 2 Chronicles chapter 32 verse 17 Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego Daniel chapter 3 verse 28 and 29 the God of Daniel, Daniel chapter 6 verse 26. 
the Most High declares that there is none other God. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive, I wound, and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 8 through 10. Is there a God beside me? Yeah, there is no God, I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses, they see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a God, or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? The Most High always leave hidden proof to hidden truth. It's like a witness. He makes these statements that reveals the truth that no one can deny because he said it. These statements prove beyond a shadow of a doubt a truth that may be hidden. The statement, for my name's sake, in the scripture proves a point. When was the first time it was mentioned in the scriptures? Isaiah chapter 48 verse 9 through 11. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it, for how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. The Most High did not want his name to be polluted among the heathen. The Most High knew that if he punished his people harshly in the sight of the heathen, they would mock him and say that he was unable to bless them. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 9, But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. So basically the Most High was concerned, because the heathen knew his name and he did not want it polluted among them. This alone proves that the name of the Most High Elohim was listed among the gods of the heathen. Now, let's go back to the time when the Most High revealed his name to Moses. At that point, no one, not the heathen, nor the forefathers knew the name of the Most High. Exodus chapter 6 verse 3 and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now, the name presented here as Jehovah was an interpretation from the Masoretic text, which is the basis for most Protestant translations of the Old Testament such as the King James Version. The Strong's Hebrew-Greek concordance is also based on the Masoretic text. So, basically all the names listed here are based on the Masoretic text. Jehovah, Jehovah, Lord, God, Yahweh, 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 Yah, I am, Ahaya Asher Ahaya, El Shaddai, El Adonai. So, which of these names are actually found in manuscripts dated well before the time of the Masoretic text? Moses revealed the name of the father to Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 5 verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is this the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Now, just because we see the name Jehovah in this place in the scripture does not mean that this was the actual name presented thousands of years ago. Apparently Moses revealed the name of the Most High to Pharaoh. Or else the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 9 would not make sense. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. You can best believe that all Egypt and neighboring nations knew the God of Moses by name. 
to the point that the Most High was concerned about his name being polluted among the heathen. So if they knew his name, what name was it? Some would have you believe that when you see name in the scriptures, it only means authority. Where do they get this from? It comes from the Strong's Hebrew Concordance, which states, Old Testament, Shem, shame, a primitive word, or through the idea of definite and conspicuous position and appellation as a mark or memorial of individuality, by implication honor, authority, character. There are two problems with this theory. First, in the same Strong's Greek Concordance, it says name, New Testament, 3686 Onoma, a name, called, plus sir, name. The other problem is that it doesn't make sense. So, when Moses asked the Most High, what was his name, he said, what is your authority? Who says that? So in all the places in the scripture, where it says name 928 times, it means authority. Let's look at the first place in the scriptures where it gives you the name of the rivers of Eden. Genesis chapter 2. The authority of the first is Pison, the authority of the second is Gian, the authority of the third is Hittical, and the authority of the fourth is Euphrates. Now, does that make any sense? You can gather by the context of the verses that these are names. What about when the Most High changed Jacob's name? Genesis chapter 35 verse 10 And God said unto him, Thy authority is Jacob. Thy authority shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy authority. And he called his authority Israel. Again, it simply doesn't make sense. We have to use common sense when studying the scriptures. Even though the Old Testament strong says authority, remember it must make sense. You can easily gather from this verse he is talking about a name. So, when you see the statement, for I wrath my name's sake, that it would not be polluted among the heathen, it was not talking about authority. If that's the case, the Most High was afraid that his authority would be polluted among the heathen. What kind of God is this that he is afraid to lose his authority? These scriptures were not talking about authority, but about his name. The statement, for my name's sake, is recorded five times in the book of Ezekiel. But I wrought for my name's sake. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 9, 14, 22, 44, chapter 36 verse 22. In this time frame, both the heathen of the land and the people of the Most High knew his name. Also, for my name's sake is mentioned ten times in the New Testament alone. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. Matthew chapter 24 verse 9. Mark chapter 13 verse 13. Luke chapter 21 verse 12. John chapter 15 verse 21. Acts chapter 9 verse 16. 1 John chapter 2 verse 12. Luke chapter 21 verse 17, 3 John verse 7, Revelation chapter 2 verse 3. Again, the statement proves that people in these times knew his name. Please note that the New Testament scriptures listed here refer to the name of the Son, the Messiah, and not the name of the Father. The name of the Son is very similar to the name of the Father. John chapter 5 verse 40 is evident of that fact. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. The disciples and New Testament assemblies knew his real name. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 22 For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Who said this? It was Samuel, the prophet that the Most High said he would not let any of his words fall to the ground. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 22. 
and Samuel grew, and the Most High was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Again, just because we see the name the Lord, or Jehovah in the modern scriptures does not mean that this was the actual name presented in the Bible thousands of years ago. It is clear by these two passages that during this time period, Samuel and the people of the Most High Elohim and the heathen around them knew his name. Who else knew his name in this time frame? David. 2 Chronicles chapter 6 verse 6 But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 16 For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. The Most High has established his house and the place that will have his true name. This is what David said to Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 But I come to thee in the name of the Most High Master of Hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Now keep in mind that it was estimated that the book of Exodus was written between 1440 and 1400 BC. So, from Exodus 1440 BC to the time of Samuel and David, which was between 1104 to 1004 BC, the people of the Most High and the heathen knew his name. But, by the time of Hosea, which is estimated to be between 760 to 720 BC, the Most High's people had begun to call him by the names of other gods. Hosea chapter 2 verse 16 through 17 And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Bali, for I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. According to the new exhaustive Strong's Numbers and Concordance, the name Bali, Old Testament, 1180, is interpreted as my master, Bali, a symbolical name for Jehovah. This period where the people of the Most High was confused about his name was very short-lived. By the time of Ezekiel, which is estimated between 600 to 500 BC, the Most High is again concerned about his name polluted among the heathen. Now Samuel, the prophet that the Most High would not let any of his words fall to the ground, and David a man after the Most High's heart knew the true name of the Most High. These are some of the quotes from David, Psalms chapter 23 verse 3. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalms chapter 25 verse 11. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. Psalms chapter 79 verse 9. For the glory of thy name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins, for thy name's sake. Psalms chapter 106 verse 8. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. Also, keep in mind that it was David that said hallelujah, which means praise ye Yah, several times in the book of Psalms. We know that there was a time period where the people of the Most High called him by the name Baal. Many teach that this was the case with David. It is believed that Saul and David named their children after the name Baal. Saul's family had male members named Ishbal and Meribal, and it was also believed that even David had a son named Beliada. Transliteration, Beeliada, Phonic, Beeliada, meaning from 1168 and 3045, Baal has known Beeljada, an Israelite. 1 Chronicles chapter 14 verse 7, and Elishama, and Beliada, and Eliphalet. This is not a true translation of what was written about the name of David's son. This is why there were other writings in the scriptures that tells you what his real name was, which was not Baliada or Beliada. Two scriptures confirm that his name was actually Eliada. 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 16. 
and Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. 1 Chronicles chapter 3 verse 8 And Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. Also in 2 Chronicles chapter 17 verse 17 And of Benjamin, Eliada a mighty man of valor, and with him armed men with bow and shield two hundred thousand. Transliteration, Eliada Phonic, Eliada, meaning, from 410 and 3045, God is, knowing, El Jada, the name of two Israelites and of an Aramean leader. The names that Saul and David named their children were not an example of them calling on a false god, but was an example of a cultural convergence of religious beliefs that the Most High is as a divine ball. Just as the name Adonijah, another son of David, explicitly represents the Most High, is as a divine Adon. After all, the scriptures do refer to Yah as our Adonai. Neither Saul nor David are portrayed as worshipping a foreign deity, invoked as Baal. A report of the Most High's victory over the Philistines is recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 20. And David came to Baalperazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baalperazim. Notice that the place of battle is named Baalperazim, because there the Most High broke through David's enemies. Baal is a Semitic common noun, Hebrew meaning, owner, or lord. However, it is most often used to describe the specific Canaanite Phoenician god of fertility and rain. This is why, when you view images of Baal, you see him holding a baby, or holding a lightning bolt in his hand. He is viewed by pagans as the god that brings the rain and babies into the world. But we know that the Most High is the true god of gods, Lord of Lords, or El of Els. The Most High Elohim is the true God of fertility and rain. This etiological comment is most naturally taken as a reference to YHWH as the master, Baal, who defeated the enemies of Israel and David. Also, notice that Isaiah and Jeremiah both knew the name of the Most High. For his name's sake is also a statement that they both stated in the scriptures. It is important to realize that both Isaiah and Jeremiah were called by his name. Isaiah is Yeshayahu, from Old Testament 3467 and 3050, meaning, Yah has saved. Yuriyahu, from Old Testament 7311 and 3050, meaning, Yah will rise. The Most High told Isaiah with his own mouth, Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8, I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 9, O Yahuwah, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16, For I am called by thy name, O Yahuwah, Elohim of hosts. My question to you is, what is his name and what is his son's name? Who said this? It was a goer, son of Jacob. He was an oracle that lived in the time of Solomon. Moses also asked the same question, what is his name? The Lord said, I am that I am, thou shalt say, I am hath sent me unto you. I am is Old Testament. 1961, Haya, a primitive root, meaning, to exist. How is it that no one, not even David or Solomon, called on the name of I Am, or Haya? No one called on this name anywhere in the scriptures. If anything, it is more of a private interpretation. No one anywhere is called by that name. Where are the people called after the name Ahaya, Yahweh, Yahweh, or even Yahuwah for that matter? These names are all offshoots of the name Yah. So, what does this mean? 
The name Yah is closer to the true name of the Father. This name has plenty of scriptures to validate and confirm it. Ahaya, or I am that I am, is also the name of the deity of the Kabbalah Jews that practice mysticism, sorcery, Jewish magic, and superstition. They actually teach that you must learn the name of their deity first. Kabbalah in historical Judaism is a branch of the Jewish mystical tradition that concerns the use of magic to invoke their deity. In the book titled, The Kabbalah Unveiled, published in 1912, Written by Samuel Adele McGregor Mathers, a British occultist and member of a secret society. He is primarily known as one of the founders of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a ceremonial magic order of which branches still exist. This is also the secret society that Aleister Crowley was a member of. In the book, the British occultist writes, the first principles and axiom of the Kabbalah is the name of the deity. Translated in our version of the Bible, I am that I am. Asher, Ahaya, Asher. A better translation is existence is existence or I am he who is. In Roman Catholicism, St. Augustine of Hippo and St. Thomas Aquinas, doctors of the church, identified the deity, I am that I am, of Exodus with the subsistent being itself, who is God himself. The Baha'i faith religion established by Baha'u'llah in 1819 also uses I am as the name of their deity. As a matter of fact, in a book titled Dawn Breakers, the writer is quoted saying, I am, thrice exclaimed the Bab, the founder of Babism, I am, I am, the promised one. I am the one whose name you have for a thousand years invoked. Now, we presented this to prove a point. Should we omit the scripture that has, I am that I am, because the occultists and wizards decided to use it also as their god? Should we discard our Bible because the Ku Klux Klan uses it? Should we omit the YHWH because the Jews use it also? The Paleo Hebrew letters for the name Yah is defined as the following. Y, written, Yah, meaning, arm hand, representing to work, throw, make or create. Number 10. The word make or create better describes the Almighty. The singular root word is He. Thus we get, He creates. Yod, or Y, written, Ya, is a symbol of the Holy One, the Creator, since the Holy Name starts with Y, meaning all of creation came forth from a single point, a point which represents God's infinite presence inside of the finite world. Ha, meaning, Behold, reveal, breath, life. Number five, if he creates, which one of these fit? Life. Thus we have the Paleo Hebrew, the word Yah defined as he creates life. Haya means to exist. We all exist, but we all do not create life. Many have believed that the name Yahuwah means he exists. We know that it actually means, he who creates life, exists. Many would have you believe that the name, Yah, was in the scriptures because it came from the Masoretic text, but this is far from the truth. As a matter of fact, Psalms chapter 150 and chapter 149 verse 9 were a part of the 11Q5 Psalter manuscripts, which are dated somewhere between 30 and 50 CE. Also noteworthy is the fact that the scroll uses the Paleo Hebrew script for the divine name of the Most High. What most don't know is the name YAH is also in both passages. Praise ye, Yah, and Hallelujah, Yah. Also, Exodus chapter 17 verse 16 from scroll 4Q14 Exodus says, Yah has sworn. The 4Q14 manuscript of Exodus is in the language Hebrew and dated between 50 to 25 BC. The reason these manuscripts are of such great interest to scholars is due to its major deviance from the Masoretic text. 
There are 48 occurrences of 3050, the name Yah in the Old Testament. Most are in David's writings. David, a man after the Most High's heart, mentioned the name of Yah 42 times. One particular scripture stands out above the others because it was actually translated right. In the Masoret text, it was translated as Jah, which is close. Psalms chapter 68 verse 4 Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Remember what the Most High said to David's son, Solomon? 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Are you aware that the names in the Bible that end in I-A-H were originally pronounced as Y-A-H, Yah? Not only that, but there were no names ending in I-A-H or Y-A-H before the time of David, the man on whose throne the Messiah is said to sit. Keep in mind, that none of these biblical names have Yahweh, 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 or Ahayah on the end of them. Where are the people in the scriptures or anywhere else that are called by those names? There is nothing wrong with these names. These names give glory and praises to the Most High Yah. Another fact is that the book of Revelation is dated between A.D. 81 to 96. Alleluia or Hallelujah is four times in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 verse 1 to 6. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. This is a statement of praise that David made, Praise ye Yah. The people of heaven are praising Yah. It is important that we understand that this name, Yah, was not interpreted into Greek or English. It was actually left in Hebrew, even in the Greek text. There are approximately 300 Greek manuscripts of Revelation. It is extant in great uncial codices. The Codex Sinaiticus, 4th century, the Codex Alexandrinus, 5th century, and the Codex Ephraimi Rescriptus, 5th century. In addition, there are numerous papyrus, especially P47 and P115, both 3rd century, and fragmentary quotations in the Church Fathers of the 2nd to 5th centuries, and the 6th century Greek commentary on Revelation by Andreas. Another point is that the Masoretic text only mentions it one time in the Book of Psalms. I wonder why. Also, are you aware that when these important manuscripts were found in 1946 and 1947, but they were kept away from the public by Jewish scholars for 40 years? This is because they were different than the Masoretic text. If you notice, the phrase, called by my name, is mentioned 11 times in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name was also a part of the Hebrew manuscript 1Q Izab, which is dated 100 BC. This info leads me to believe that names with the name Yah are names that give him glory. 
Ahaya, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahowah, Yahusha, Yahushua, Yahawashai. What about when we see the name, Yah, as a god in Egypt, before the time that his name was revealed? Many claimed that they will not accept the name, Yah, because it was the name of a god in Egypt. Well, there are stories of the virgin birth thousands of years before the Messiah was born. Addis, a Greek god, born of a virgin around 1,250 years before the Messiah. Laozi, a Chinese god, born of a virgin around 600 years before the Messiah. Hermes, a Greek god, born of a virgin 500 years before the Messiah was born. Do we not believe in the birth of the Messiah by a virgin because it was first done in Greece 1,250 years ago? Keep in mind that the name, Yah, means, he creates life. So, in Egypt, the Egyptians has a god called Ea, or Yah, which means he created life, years before the Most High revealed that he was the creator of life. The Egyptians were claiming that their God created the sun, moon, and all that exist. In fact, he created nothing. But the Most High Elohim of the heavens was the true He creates life, Yah, which is a title that is only reserved for the Most High Elohim. When you see the name Yah in Egypt, Yahotep, which means he who creates is content, or Amos, which means he who creates is born. This is completely why the Most High Elohim of the heavens targeted Egypt. They were claiming that their gods were the creator of the moon, the sun, and the earth. He wanted to prove to the world that he was the true, he creates life, Yah, or he that created everything, including the moon and the sun that they worshipped. The Egyptians and Pharaoh took a title that only belonged to the Most High and used it as the name of their God, Yah, He creates life. With a mighty hand, the Most High God of the heavens delivered the children of Israel out of slavery and defeated Pharaoh and his army and took his title back from the Egyptians. Thus, the true He creates life is now known as the God or Elohim of the Israelites. The Egyptians out of error thought that their gods were Yah, he creates life, but they were mistaken. This is exactly why the Most High created Pharaoh and raised him to be king over Egypt. Romans chapter 9 verse 17 For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I, the Most High Elohim, raised thee up, that I, the Most High Elohim, might show my power in thee, and that my name, he creates life, might be declared throughout all the earth. Some may ask, why didn't he reveal the name to Moses in the first place? Well, if the Most High did that, then Moses would have said, You are Yah? He creates life? The God of the Egyptians? This is why the Most High allowed centuries to pass until a time when no one knew that the Egyptians stealthily appropriated one of his divine titles, until the time he revealed to David that he was the true Yah, he who creates life. Understand that the name of the Most High is not just a name, it's a title. The Pharaohs had taken his title, and the Most High was going to make them pay for it. Before the Empire of Egypt, Mitzrayim, son of Ham, existed. Even before creation, the Most High Elohim was and is, he creates life, Yah. It makes sense that the Most High would say that this is his name forever. He will always be, Yah. Hallelujah, the highest praise, testify that the name of the Father is, Yah. Notice in the highest praise you do not see, Hallelujah, Yah. Hallelujah, Hua, Hallelujah, Way, Hallelujah, Jehovah, or Hallelujah, Lord. You see, Hallelujah. Now that we have covered the name of the Father, the Elohim of the heavens, what is his son's name? 
We must understand that the Messiah's name must have been Paleo Hebrew, and since there is no letter J in Paleo Hebrew, we must first rule out the name, Jesus. Notice what the Messiah said about his name and the Father's name. John chapter 5 verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. The other that came in his own name is Jesus. This is a part of the great deception, a false name with a false image. The scripture makes it clear that the Son's name should resemble the Father's name. In order to find this out, we must find the earliest form of the Son's name. To do this, we must look into the Codex Sinaiticus. The Codex Sinaiticus, or Sinai Bible, is a 4th century Messianic manuscript of a Greek Bible containing the majority of the Greek Old Testament, including the Apocrypha along with the Deuterocanonical books and the Greek New Testament, with both the Epistle of Barnabas and the Shepherd of Hermas included. The name of the Messiah does not appear in the manuscript at all, and there is no Jesus or any Greek variation of it, i.e. Isis. However, the nomina sacra, or sacred abbreviation, Iota Sigma, does appear in place of the son's name throughout the manuscript. So, the early scribes attributed a special status to the son's name in using the abbreviation in the manuscripts. The Septuagint sometimes referred to as the Greek Old Testament or the translation of the 70 and often abbreviated as LXX is the earliest extant Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible from the original Hebrew by 72 Hebrew translators. The Greek name for the Messiah in the Septuagint is Jesus to translate the Hebrew name Joshua, which is actually pronounced as Yehoshua, which is a combination of YHVH and Yasha, meaning YHVH saves. The shortened version of the name is Yeshua, translated from 1st Chronicles chapter 24 verse 11 and Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 17. The problem with this is that the father's name was not four alphabets of Paleo Hebrew, only two letters, the Y and H, which stands for Yah. So where is the father's name in the name of the son? The name of the Messiah is Yahusha, simply because this name is identical to the patriarch Husha, otherwise known as Joshua, the son of Nun. Husha, Joshua, was one of the twelve men sent to spy out the promised land, recorded in the book of Numbers. The name Yahusha is taken from Hebrew, not Greek. Numbers chapter 13 verse 16, these are the names of the men which Moshe, sent to spy out the land and Moshe called Husha the son of Nun Yahusha the Hebrew translation of the name Joshua is Yahushua which means Jehovah is salvation or Jehovah saved Hosea or Oshe means salvation the pronunciation is Husha since we know now that the father's name is Y-A-H it should read Yah is salvation, or Yah saved. The name Yahusha is a more accurate transliteration of the name given to the Messiah, since he has the same name as Husha, Joshua, son of Nun. In Paleo Hebrew, the name Yahusha means Yah, he who creates life. Husha is salvation. Yahusha, he who creates life, is salvation. We have only one last question to ask. Which name, based on its meaning, best describes the Father? Ahaya, meaning, to exist or he exists. Yahweh, meaning, self-existent. Yah, meaning, he creates life. So, what is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? The answer is Yah and Yahusha.
Join us as we uncover true Bible history. From the creation of the heavens and the earth, to the first man and woman, from the forbidden tree of knowledge, to ancient biblical manuscripts and translations. Discover information about early settlers in the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, Egypt, ancient Israel, and Rome. Hidden truths about the true name of God and about the early church age, from the time of the Messiah and the Last Supper to the time of Constantine, we will discover hidden information. We will uncover mistranslations and misquotes of the Bible to help you gain a better understanding of Scripture. Hellenistic Judaism and Greek influence of the New Testament will be revealed. In this series, we will unlock the truth about the people of the Bible, false gods of antiquity, their symbols, and their influence on Christianity. All this and more in our new series, Uncovering True Biblical History.